Hello, my name is Doug Peterson and I'm one of UCM's risk managers. Today you will receive UCM's crane rigging and signaling training. Under OSHA guidelines, all rigger signal persons must be qualified to properly rig a load and also be able to properly signal the crane operator through all its necessary functions. In recent years, many studies have taken place that highlight the potential risk involved in crane operation on construction sites. One alarming fact is that it is most oftentimes someone other than the crane operator who was hurt or even killed during a crane accident. Another common occurrence when it comes to crane accidents is electrocution from power lines. In addition to this, cranes pose a risk when workers are struck by a load, caught inside the swing radius, or fail to rig the load properly. It is apparent that crane safety must be in the forefront of every employee's mind during such operations. In an effort to prevent the incidents mentioned above and to meet OSHA's provisions on cranes and derricks and construction, UCM has developed this program to qualify its employees to meet the required training. Rigging. Be sure to inspect rigging and all of its components before each use. This includes straps, shackles, cables, chains, and hooks. Look for abrasions, cuts, cracks, tears, gouging, stretching, bends, or possible heat damage. All rigging components with excessive damage shall be taken out of service. Overlook hooks and shackles to be certain that no damage or deformation is present. Don't forget to inspect rigging tag to review load limits. All rigging must be properly tagged and legible. Be sure to find the center of gravity for each load. Additionally, you must be able to calculate the weight of the load. It is absolutely necessary that all loads are taglined. Be aware of your load limits for your crane and your rigging. Account for potential deflection and or shock loads when working in muddy conditions or while lifting a load that has been sitting in one spot for an extended period of time. Under no circumstance should you allow for rigging to drag across the ground. Such actions quickly diminish the integrity of the rigging. Be aware that two-leg rigging load capacity changes depending on the angle of the legs. You must refer to your rigging chart when trying to figure how to lift the load properly. Signaling. Per OSHA guidelines, you must be able to physically demonstrate on site that you know the proper signaling techniques. In addition, you must be able to pass a written exam. Remember that communication during lifts is paramount whether it is visual or radio communication. Radio communication is required during blind picks. No personnel shall stand or walk under a load suspended or moving, including your body parts like arms and legs. As a signaler, you are required to pre-plan for your lifts. An example of this is making sure your direction of travel is clear and be certain all personnel are aware of the lift taking place. Keep equipment clear of power lines. Remain at least 20 foot distance from power if feasible. If not feasible, you must have a spotter to act as a safety monitor, but still remain at least 10 foot away from power at all times. If you need to be closer than 10 foot, you must consider the voltage and maintain the required distance according to your risk manager. Oftentimes, in these instances, supervision or risk management will consult with Ameren to help develop a plan to work safely around power lines. Now, here are your required crane signaling techniques.
As you can see, UCM is indeed a safe place to work. This concludes your video portion of rigor signal training for UCM. And remember, from hard hat to work boots, safety starts with you.